So who has the toughest championship fixture running from this point onwards? We are really at the business end of this championship season now where teams are fighting for relegation, top six places are up for grabs and also one more automatic spot on top of that as well. Thanks to box to box Analytics on Twitter, they've gone ahead and compiled a wonderful graphic which shows the fixture difficulty that each championship club will face from this point onwards. I'll leave a link to box to box Analytics in the description down below. Really handy account to follow for all your data on the championship. Without any further ado, let's jump in. Starting out with the clubs with the easiest fixtures and will gradually get more difficult as the video goes on. It's Stoke City who have technically the easiest running from this point onwards based on the league positions of the teams they've still got to play. Three of their remaining five fixtures are up against sides who are below them in the table, but Stoke are one of those sides who don't really have anything to play for at this point. After that, we have Burnley with an average fixture difficulty of 16.7, and this gives them every chance of potentially breaking the championship all-time points record if they're to win all of their remaining six matches they'll finish the season with 108 points but they can't afford any slip-ups if they are to reach that point tally Burnley could still have quite the influence on the relegation picture this season with still games to come against the likes of Reading, Rotherham, QPR and Cardiff and it's really a question of whether or not Vincent Company's side will take the foot off the gas in these final few weeks I don't think they will personally for Wigan to survive from this point onwards, it would take a miraculous run of results, but they could have quite the influence on who goes down with them. They've still got some massive crunch matches to come against the likes of Blackpool, Reading and Rotherham, and it'll be interesting to see if by the time those games against the likes of Reading and Rotherham do come around, if Wigan have already been relegated by that point, that could play into the hands of their opposition. Surely Millwall fans have to take some positives from this. It's not been a great run they've been on recently, but they do have the best collection of fixtures of the sides who are currently gunning for a place in the top six. They've got that massive game against my side coming up at the weekend and after that have three really quite winnable fixtures against Birmingham, Wigan and Blackpool and if they pick up nine points from those three fixtures they'll be sitting pretty comfortably I'd imagine. Are Watford still in the playoff hunt and could they make a late charge? They still have some decent fixtures to come. The problem with Watford this season is even in those favourable fixtures where we have pitted them as the favourites, they've often come and stuck in those games. And this will surely come as good news to Sheffield United fans. They do have the easier fixture running compared to both Middlesbrough and Luton with an average league position of 147 for the Blades remaining fixtures. Sandwiched in the middle of all that, they have an FA Cup tie still to come against Manchester City as well, but strictly talking about the league, I'd be very surprised if Sheffield United threw it away from this position. Norwich being this high up on the video has to give their fans some confidence that they're going to get over the line and into the top six, but saying that, it's been some of those winnable matches that they've really slipped up in of late. They've got a massive game coming up this weekend against Middlesbrough, and after that, have three really winnable matches against the likes of QPR, Swansea and Blackpool and if any of the sides in the chasing pack can win three of their last five they're putting themselves in a really strong position to finish in the top six I think. After that we have another top six chaser in Coventry now they'll have to do slightly more in these final games than Norwich as they have more teams to overtake on their way to the top six and in terms of Coventry finishing in the playoffs they're probably going to have to take maximum points from games against QPR, Reading and Birmingham and then win at least one of their head-to-heads they've got against Blackburn and Middlesbrough. The fixture difficulty list means absolutely nothing when it comes to Neil Warnock and Huddersfield because they've you know smashed all sorts of things when it comes to proving people wrong during Warnock's tenure. What is important though is Huddersfield keep this run going because they're certainly not out of the relegation dogfight by any stretch. Just two points above the relegation zone right now. Um, it's a real scramble in there for that last spot at the moment. They've still got some winnable fixtures coming up and they're going to need to carry on this momentum which they've been able to build up lately. Sunderland are just about hanging in there in the playoff picture but they could make things especially interesting if they manage to pull together back-to-back -to -back wins in their next two home matches. Now they have been a little bit inconsistent of late at the Stadium of Light but with games to come against Birmingham and Huddersfield they'll make things very interesting around the top six if they pick up maximum points from those games. They finish the season with a trio of games against West Brom, Watford and Preston 
Luton, which will be tasty. For Luton Town, it's looking more than likely that it will be a playoff spot at the end of the season, but not totally discounting a collapse from the Blades, and Luton fans will certainly be hoping for that over these next few weeks, and I think there's every possibility that they maintain this unbeaten streak until the end of the season. They've been really good of late. They've got back-to-back -back away games against Rotherham and Reading, which I wouldn't be surprised to see them taking maximum points from, and then two real crunch matches against Middlesbrough and Blackburn in what could be a potential dress rehearsal for the playoffs. For Blackpool, it would take a pretty miraculous run to stay up from this point, especially with the fixtures they've still got to come. It's a must-win game coming up against Wigan, but after that, no real easy games, with still games to come against West Brom, Millwall and Norwich. Swansea might not be in the top six race themselves, but they could still have quite the say on who goes on to finish in there, with still games to come against playoff chasers like Preston, Norwich and West Brom. They've put together a few decent results recently and I think will be one to watch out for in those games especially. West Brom have hit a rocky patch of form at the wrong point of this season and with some tough games to come it'll take quite the turnaround from this point to get the points to overtake the teams above them. The toughest games they've still got to play against the likes of Sunderland, Sheffield United and Norwich. I think Reading are really now realising the perilous position that they find themselves in. With this fixture difficulty rating, that's especially bumped up by their next two home matches with games against Burnley and Luton. If they lose both of those, which I think a lot of people would expect them to, it puts enormous pressure, especially on the last two games of the season they've got against Wigan and Huddersfield. Field. And I think that ultimately their championship survival will come down to those two head-to-heads. From a Cardiff perspective, it's very interesting that they have the exact same fixture difficulty ranking that Reading do for their remaining matches. The advantage that Cardiff hold is the fact that they still have that game in hand to come against Rotherham. And I think that their season really could boil down to the head-to-heads they've still got to play against the fellow sides around them. Still got that game against Rotherham and a home game against Huddersfield, which will be absolutely pivotal as well. Other than that, it's looking like quite a tough run, I have to say, for Cardiff, who still have games against Sheffield United, Watford, Stoke and Burnley to come. Now, Rotherham have done really well to give themselves that buffer between themselves and the relegation zone recently, because what that now allows is for a slip or two in their next couple of fixtures, which are looking particularly tough against Luton and Burnley. Should they, you know, drop points in both those matches, like I think a lot of people would expect them to, they've given themselves that buffer of points already over the bottom three and then they've still got a few other winnable fixtures to come uh, with head-to-heads against Cardiff and Wigan especially which are going to be pivotal. If Middlesbrough are going to sneak above both Luton and Sheffield United then they're going to have to do it going through some really tough sides between now and the end of the season with games to come against Norwich, Luton and Coventry still to play. I think with the way they've tailed off ever so slightly recently it is more than likely to be a playoff spot for Borough. What brings Bristol City's fixture difficulty ranking up especially is they've still got games to come against the top two with games against Sheffield United and Burnley still to play but ultimately Bristol City are just meandering towards a mid-table sort of finish right now. We've spoken about Birmingham in recent weeks and how important it was that they hit the 50 point mark before they ran into the these final five league fixtures because they've still got some really difficult matches to come as well. Still got games against promotion chasers with the likes of Sunderland, Millwall, Coventry and Sheffield United to play. The only team they play to come who's below them in the table right now is Blackpool. And this right here is why I'm really nervous about QPR. They've got the toughest fixture running out of all the sides who are currently involved in the relegation dogfight and they only hold a two point lead lead over Reading as things stand. There are no easy matches for QPR from this point onwards. They've got no games to play against any of the sides who are currently below them in the table and they've also got no head-to-heads to play against any of the other sides that are really in the relegation picture. To come for QPR it's five games against Coventry, Norwich, Burnley, Stoke and Bristol City. That's tough. Hull are likely to have an impact on who makes the top six this season while they themselves aren't really involved in any of that but they've gone ahead and got themselves over that 50 point mark whereby it will likely be a sort of 
comfortable mid-table finish for them come the end of the season despite the tough fixtures. And then with the second hardest running of the championship from this point onwards, we have my side Preston North End. We've, we are the form team in the championship right now, it has to be said, but throughout this great run of form we've had recently, we've played pretty much every side in and around the relegation zone. And from this point onwards, it's all teams who are sort of vying for promotion. And so it's going to be a thrilling end to the season where level on points with both Blackburn and Millwall at the moment with head-to-heads to come against both of those sides. Still got Sheffield United and Sunderland to play in the mix as well. But coming out at the top of the list with the toughest fixture running from now until the end of the season, we have Blackburn Rovers. So fair play to them if they do go ahead and make it over the line. They've still got games against Coventry, Preston, Burnley, Luton and Millwall. Those are their final five games of the season. Before they have that run, they have a home game at Ewood Park against Hull, which I think is a must win for Blackburn given the fixtures they have to come. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And an interesting one to gauge how each championship side is faring for the remainder of the season in terms of the fixtures they still have to come. Once again, big shout out to box to box Analytics on Twitter. Make sure to go ahead and give that account a follow. But that will wrap it up for today's video, guys. If you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. And I'll see you all in the next one.